Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I am headed to CJ Pony Parts in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to pick up a special part for our 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands. We're picking up the Ford Performance factory worn winch mount for the Bronco today. We're making the trip from our hometown to Harrisburg. It's only two hours away. Uh, we're gonna save on freight shipping. That's a few hundred dollars. On top of that, CJ Pony Parts had the absolute best price on this winch kit. They had it listed for $23.99. I got an additional 10% off of that. That puts us at $22.89 all in with tax, no shipping, which is a great price for this winch kit. I've seen this listed as high as $3,600. When we get this winch kit home, we're gonna do a full unboxing video and we're gonna do a full installation video to show you what this kit is about, how it's engineered, and how it installs. So follow along as we pick up this winch kit and get it on the Bronco. There it is, huh? That's it. What is it, about 150 pounds? What I couldn't figure out was they had it on a pallet, and this little box was in a box that was as big as this thing is, but That's just crazy. right inside. Oh, what the hell are you doing? That's crazy. These sides have come off. I'll put this up front. Wonder what this in the little box is. Oh, uh, it's the base plate. I was so curious. Oh, the uh, the the uh, the fair lead. Yeah, the fair lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was so curious. I had to look at it. She is heavy. Oh, this will fit sideways. So you guys are a Ford Performance dealer? Correct. So any Ford Performance part you guys can get? For the most part, yeah. Yeah, if I appreciate it. If it's not offered, we can look into special order, and we can't special order all the stuff. Yeah. But we can look into it and look at pricing and those kinds of deals. So that's yeah. how it's available. Now, your price was just fantastic on this. I, when I pulled it up yesterday, I was like, I got to know what it is. Like, that's a damn nice looking winch, too. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the... ride well on there. Yeah. Such a pretty color on that thing, too. Yeah, the cactus gray is cool. It's like yeah. a retro, you know? Yep. That's why I like it. Heck yeah, man. Hey, I appreciate your help. Luck. See you now. Okay, guys, we have our boxes from CJ Pony Parts unloaded. We have the Bronco in the garage. Before we get started with the unboxing, in case you haven't seen our Bronco or heard me talk about it in other videos, let me just tell you what we have here. This is a 2021 Bronco Badlands, obviously cactus gray, four door. Uh, I call this the no option Badlands. This has the four cylinder turbo with a seven speed manual transmission, no added options except for these optional beadlock capable wheels. A few things, a few disclaimers on this winch. This is a Ford Performance factory worn winch kit that we're gonna be installing. Now, there's a few stipulations with this. If you have parking sensors, when you install this winch, no longer operational. If you have ad adaptive cruise control, no longer operational when you install this winch. If you have a camera, forward facing camera, uh, it will be obstructed. The camera will work, but the view is going to be obstructed uh, by the winch. You have to have the factory steel capable bumper to install this winch. I'm being told, I don't know why, but if you ordered the steel capable bumper after the sale, if it wasn't on from the factory, you cannot use this winch. I do, know, do not know why, but that's what I understand. This, this has to be 150 pounds, easy. Uh, this may lower the front end of this Bronco just a little bit. We may have to put a small leveling kit. I'm not crazy about the spacer kits, but uh, we're talking an inch, inch and a quarter. If it, if it settles it more than an inch, inch and a quarter, we're gonna have to go with a real lift for the front. I, I don't want this front end to be nose down We'll just have to see. We'll measure, we'll measure the, uh, the height of these flares before we start the installation. We'll mark them, and then we will, uh, we'll measure it after we're done. Like I said, if it's more than an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, we may have to do a more serious lift 
Um, anything less than that, uh, Ready Lift makes a really nice uh, aluminum inch and a quarter spacer lift for the front end, and I think it will be fine with that. So, for now, let's get started with the unboxing. There's two tags on this box. We'll get you in close to see. You can see the numbers. That's the Ford part number. This looks like the Warren part number. Okay, I must confess, um, I, I cheated a little bit, and I haven't opened the big box. But when I picked it up, there was a separate little box. And the uh, gentleman at CJ Pony Parts said that this was in a larger box uh, on, on the same pallet as the big box. And I opened, he said it was the fair lead. So uh, that's one of the parts that you really see the most. So I was real curious to see what the fair lead looked like. And I was, when I opened it up, I was surprised. I was very surprised. And I'll show you why here. This fair lead, actually, uh, I did some research. This is made by Factor 55, which uh, is owned by Warren now. So this is a gray anodized fair lead with four performance etched into, laser etched into it. Now, this isn't the fair lead that they show in all the photographs of this winch kit. Although, I like this fair lead because it matches the color of the Bronco grille. Uh, there's nothing shiny or polished on the front end of that Bronco. So, I was actually contemplating ordering, ordering another fair lead. But I, I didn't order anything until I see all the parts of what we have. Um, but I think, and we're going to find out here, I think there's another fair lead in that big box. I don't know why they would ship this separately. It's not the one that's shown with the kit in any of the photographs that I've seen. This is kind of a nice surprise. I like it. The, the finish is kind of funny though. I have to say the finish is, is a little, it's a little blotchy and it's a, a little, it almost looks like it's, it's, it's scratchy a little bit, but I think that could possibly rub out or even out with some compound. But for now, we're going to set this aside. But I wanted to show you that. So the big question will be, is there another fair lead in the big box? And that's okay, guys, so here we go. Hey, buddy. It's our boy Tonka. He's a big Bronco fan, aren't you? A box in a box. Oh, small box. Okay. Might as well do this one first. A lot of brackets, as you can see. <laughs> oh wow, they're all numbered nicely too. You having fun? More brackets. It looks like these are laid out left to right. You can even see that. Very, very well organized. These are frame reinforcement brackets with locator notches. 
This is a heavy duty kit. There's no question about it. Tonka, easy. <laughs> Am I not going fast enough for you? Hmm? Another bracket. Just a lot of different brackets. We'll go over these when we do the install. We're gonna do a full install video. Another small box. Oh wow. So these, Tonka. So these, could you want that? Go ahead, take it. Take it and go. Okay, good boy. These replace the, can you see this? You getting this? These replace the, the recovery points that are now on the Bronco. They come off, get replaced. These are heavy. These, these are massively heavy. Oh, it's got handles on it. Okay. So that's the winch itself. Man, this is really packed, packaged very nicely. Oh, I was right. A second fair lead. I, I was right. So this is the fair lead that all the pictures show. It's nice. I just, I have no polished parts on the Bronco, and so I just don't know. But it's nice, as you can see, it's nice. This is the one that is in all the photographs of the kit. So now we have our choice of, we have two fair leads, which is interesting. I don't really know what's going on there, but there you have it. So we have the fair lead. We have a wired remote. Very nice. This looks like a chafing gear for the for the winch line itself. Very nice. Well, we might as well open that up since we're doing an unboxing. Show you what this is. You catch you catching that? How about this? So this goes over your winch line uh, at the end near your hook to protect that, which is pretty cool. That's very nice, very nice. We're gonna run out of bench space, I believe. Some hardware, and here's our hook. Standard, just a standard worn hook with a strap on it so you can pull on it. Nothing fancy. We'll see if we keep this or actually I'm, I'm thinking about doing a gray uh, ultra hook from Factor 55, which is owned by Warren now. So there's that. Wow, very nice. As you can see, the cables are all sheathed. Both the positive and the negative are sheathed in this nice uh, chafing gear. The split wire loom. Very nice. What now? Not what do you want now? Do you want some more cardboard? Here's the paperwork. Talk 
Tonka. You're not done with this cardboard. So here's our winch. I'm just going to leave it in this box for now, but we'll take some of the wrapping off of it so you can see it. You can there see that. This comes with a Xeon 10S. S stands for synthetic, synthetic uh, rope. This has 100 feet of 3 8 synthetic uh, winch rope on it. 10,000 pound capacity. Very nice. You want that? Go ahead. So that's what that looks like. Get a good shot of that, Kim? Okay. Tonka's first unboxing. You having fun? He loves, he loves unboxing anything. But that's a good looking winch. That is beautiful. That is gonna look just fantastic on the front of this Bronco. So we're gonna leave that in the box. No sense in taking that out. Thankfully this has handles on it. I'm just gonna set this over here. Another small box. This is the other This is the other mount. That must weigh. That's got to be 10 pounds. That has to be at least 10 pounds each. That is a beautifully cast and machined piece right there. I we'll have another box. Beep beep. Beep beep. Come on, beep beep. go. Instead of trying to lift that up out of there. There we go. It's a heavy piece. This is our winch plate. There's 25 pounds, easy. But you can see how nicely formed this is. Definitely not a cobble job. Engineered designed by Warren and Ford Performance. This is where your fair lead mounts. Another nice, nice heavy piece. Oh, this is our This is the bull bar that attaches to the to the winch plate. Very nice. Not too big, not too small, nice diameter. Probably go like that, I believe. Very nice. Nice coating on that. And, oh, in case you, in case your state requires a front license plate bracket, 
that's what this is. Our state does not. But if your state does require front license plate, that mounts too. Save that. And they even give you a frame. So, nice to have in case you sell the truck to somebody that uh, lives in a state where, you know, you have to have a front license plate, hold on to this, can go with the truck. And I believe that's it. No. No, I'm wrong. There's more. There's more. Okay, this is pretty sure hardware. Let's see what we have. More brackets. More heavy, heavy brackets. You see the gauge of the steel. Can you see how thick that is? And everything is numbered. Everything has a part number. Everything has a Ford part number. The instructions show you where each part number goes. We have the instructions printed out. Just really pleased with the quality of these parts. This is a serious kit. This is your hardware kit. Some of it is black coated, others is zinc, like a zinc coating. Nice heavy hardware. So, this is what we have, folks. Okay guys, we have everything organized and laid out and getting ready for the install. We'll just go over all the parts we have real quick. This is our winch mounting plate with the bull bar. That's just mocked up for now. Brackets for the frame. And these castings to mount the plate onto the truck. Locator brackets, reinforcement brackets. We have our remote. We have all our hardware packs, our paperwork. Our line protector, two fair leads, we'll get to that in a second, and the star of the show, the Warren Xeon 10S with cables. I've been looking at these fair leads and mocking them up onto this plate. Actually, the one on the left fits this shape of this plate perfectly. So the jewelry's still out on what we're going to do there. And besides these two, there's other fair leads that could be purchased from Warren uh, in different, different colors. And uh, we'll just have to see what we're gonna do. The hooks definitely, uh, we'll, we'll use it for now, you know, for, for the installation video, but we're probably gonna go with a, a Factor 55 Ultra Hook so we can do both um, a closed winching system and, and use the hook if we have to. But um, the factory finish I mean, it's a perfect match. If you look at the finish on that compared to the finish on the steel bumper, it's a perfect match. And it's, I think it's, I'm, I'm very pleased with this kit, what I've seen so far. It looks like it's very well engineered for the Bronco. And you may be wondering, well, why are you putting, I mean, this thing should go anywhere. Why are we putting a winch on this? Well, the big reason is, uh, we're headed to Overland Expo East in October to start shopping for an off-grid trailer to pull behind the Bronco. And I, and I just think it's a, it's a good idea to have some insurance up front in the form of a 10,000 pound winch if we're gonna be pulling a camper off-road on trails here in the Northeast. Um, I just think it's a good idea. So I've been shopping around for one of these kits 
for a few months now and CJ Pony Parts just knocked it right out of the park with the price on this. Um, we're under $2,300 for this kit. That's tax, that's everything. Uh, as you saw from our video, we went down to CJ in Harrisburg and picked it up. It was only a two hour ride down and back and we saved a few more hundred dollars on shipping. So that's where to get this kit right now if you're interested is CJ Pony Parts. The service was great. Uh, yesterday the, the guy at the counter was awesome. I was in and out of there. He helped me load it. And I just I can't say enough, a, a good transaction. And somehow we even got a bonus fairly in, in the deal. If anybody knows anything about why we got a bonus fair lead. Let me know. I'm, I'm curious to know. That was in a separate box on the pallet, he said. Uh, very interesting. I don't know. But, uh, but we have it. And the next step is to, uh, is to get all these parts over there. All right, guys. So we've got our tools ready. We've got our instructions here from Ford. We've got all our parts laid out. Now, what I've done is... I've organized these parts in the order that they go on and also um, left and right. So a lot of these parts, if not everything except I believe these, uh, these big recovery point and mounting brackets, everything but those are um, left and right specific. So we've gone ahead, organized all of our brackets, all of our hardware, in order that they go on and left and right side of the frame. Look how heavy these are. This is what the winch mounting plate mounts to. These mount to those and then your plate mounts to these L brackets. Got all our hardware. Um, this is all metric. So it's uh, it's it's 10.9. This is this is the real deal from Ford factory OE style fasteners. 10.9 grade strength. Uh, well, we splurged on an ultra hook, yeah, versus the factory hook. So that's going to be a nice little thing. There's one little uh, modification we have to do to mount this. We'll get to that later. These nuts are really cool. I call these captured washer nuts. Um, the washer is attached to the nut, but the nut spins in the washer. OEM quality. Um, the only hardware I've changed so far is for the fair lead, and we'll get to the fair lead here in a second, but this is what they sent in the kit. Acorn nuts, um, nothing special for that. We ordered from uh, Summit Racing these ARP Chrome Molly 12 point black oxide fasteners. These are a 7 16 20 thread, inch and a quarter long. Um, you get some washers with the bolts, and of course, the nuts are 12 points too. So that's uh, an upgrade in hardware for the fair lead. And since we're talking about that, we have our selection of fair leads over here now the two on the right this polished one and then the one from uh, factor 55 with the ford performance logo on it they actually came with the winch kit i wasn't crazy about either one of those the this is a nice they're all nice but uh, as you can see the shape the shape of that fair lead bracket matches the worn fair leads perfectly. And so it, it didn't quite, the Factor 55 fair lead didn't quite match up. I liked that it was gray because everything on the Bronco is gray and black. If this would have matched up better, I probably would use it. This it just doesn't fit with, you know, what's going on with the Bronco. There's no polished aluminum on the Bronco. So trying to keep it all kind of factory original. So we ordered this from Warren. Um, this is obviously a black coated fair lead and it looks really good. I think, I think you'll agree when we get it all together that this, this is the one to go with. And that's why we went with these 
black 12 point fasteners. They'll blend right in. They look trick with the 12 point heads. Um, so yeah, so those are all our parts ready to go. Tools ready, instructions ready. Now one thing that I did before we take anything off or add anything is I marked and measured the height, the ride height at that point right there, that line. So it's 38 and 5 16 This is a heavy, heavy kit. And I'm curious to see if we lose uh, any ride height when we put this on. So we've marked and measured. We'll mark and measure when everything else is on. To see what we need to do, if anything, for a, a, a lift or a leveling kit, at least on the front end of the Bronco. I'm hoping we don't lose much, but I just don't know. This is awful heavy. As you can see, there's a lot of metal. And that winch, huh? That's a 10K Xeon 10S synthetic rope winch. Beautiful piece. It's not light. Um, the mount's not light. As you can see, the bracketry is, is thick. It's heavy, heavy duty, heavy gauge. Now, there are some pieces coming off that get replaced with some of these pieces, but we just don't know. So I wanted a baseline. And, uh, and that's our baseline right there. So let's dig in. The first thing, first thing we have to do is take our Gear America shackles off. We take the lower skid plate off and we take these, these plastic covers off. There's some uh, pins, some trim pins that we need to take off. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. We'll, we'll get into this, we'll get those parts off and then we'll go from there. So we have our bumper off, and I do recommend a second person to help pull that bumper off. Now the next step, we have these two little bolts, 10 millimeter socket. They hold the factory recovery points on from the backside. And that, that's just really to hold them on the bumper until you get it mounted to the truck, and then those recovery points get sandwiched with those three big bolts. But that's the next step. They say to put these in the trash. I don't recommend that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hold on to these. You just never know. So, for what it's worth. So the next step, we're going to remove these backing plates from behind this frame horn bracket. There's two plastic, there's two plastic nuts that hold these on. I'm going to show you. You can feel them just reach back there. So once you've got those two nuts off, you just rotate this up and slide it out. So they say to throw these away too. Save the four uh, plastic flange nuts, but um, I'm also gonna save these. I'm not gonna throw any parts out. So the next step is to put your clevis brackets, install those back onto the bumper and we're going to show you how you do that. These slide in from the front. There's a, there's a locator pin and you reuse that little um, bolt that you took out earlier. You reuse that. We put a little uh, 
WD-40 on the threads because they were a little dry. Like I said, there is a left and a right. There's nuts welded onto the front of these. The nuts have to be towards the center of the bumper. So here's where we're at. We're on the driver's side frame rail, and here's your next step. This bolt right here, and the one right behind it. The forward one comes the whole way out. The rear one gets loosened, so you have about a half inch gap. There's a bracket that will slide in there and get tightened up. That's your next step. This is your CAC bracket. There's a right and a left. Snug that back up. These get torqued to 59 foot pound. We'll get our torque wrench set up. So this is uh, so these are called shoulder bolts, and I'll show you where these go. There. So that goes through the frame. Like so. You'll see. That goes through your frame and there. So that's called a shoulder bolt. You work that in that hole. It goes from in from the inside of the frame. Do that for both sides. So the next step is to install two brackets on each shoulder bolt. And now every you got four brackets, everyone has a different part number. So it's critical that you make sure you have everything uh, organized and sorted out. So we're gonna get those on. This is your shoulder bolt. These are your brackets. The picture shows that the, this tab on the shoulder bolt goes up. The inner one won't go in if they're up. They have to be down. All that tab does is keeps the shoulder bolt from rotating as you tighten those nuts. So, and like I said, these are, these are uh, all different part numbers for all four of these brackets. So make sure you get them in the right location and just hand tighten your nuts at this time onto the shoulder bolt. And that's both sides. As you can see, we've got both brackets on each side of the frame on both sides of the Bronco. Um, like I said, this tab, Rotate it down or you won't you won't get that bracket in because it has to slide over that stud There's a stud right there where the plastic nut goes back on at some point probably and It has to go over that And it can't go over that if that is in the up position. So just rotate that down So the next step is to install these these are called frame rail brackets there's a left and a right, and we'll get the left side on now. So just work your frame rail bracket over and slide it up. And there's two studs where those plastic nuts go. So these are the plastic nuts that we took off earlier. They go back on those studs, holding that bracket on and this is just this is just to hold the bracket in place temporarily these plastic nuts don't really have any strength but they hold everything in place until you're ready to put your your big bolts through so the next step is to torque those nuts holding the L brackets on to 35 foot pounds we're going to run them up snug with a ratchet and then torque them. You want to make sure that they're pushed up against your frame horn. So 
So we have all four nuts torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Um, you can see we have all our, all our new brackets in and the bumper is ready to go back on. The biggest thing about all these brackets is uh, there's individual part numbers left and right, inner and outer. So make sure that you have those straightened out. We put a little WD-40 on our bolts that we used when we, uh, you know, were originally holding the bumper on. We reused those. These uh, clevis brackets, see it's got a groove. They, they slide over these studs. Okay, and then there's a nut that goes on. And then of course you have these three mounting points. Okay. So we're ready to put the bumper back on. Uh, I recommend two people, but right now I don't have a second person. So we're gonna try to roll it in with this uh, floor jack and see what happens. Okay, bumper bolts are torqued to 59 foot-pounds. I talked about those clevis brackets. Take a couple of your captured washer nuts. Now these go on tight. I started them by hand. If I didn't start these by hand, I would swear that they're cross threaded, but they're not. Okay, so the bumper's all lined up and tight. The next step is to install the recover forging into the clevis bracket. So this is your recovery or recover forging. This is one of the main components and this thing is heavy. This must weigh 10. 10 to 15 pounds. Okay guys, it's, it's time to marry up the uh, winch to the winch plate. And I found that the easiest way to do this is put your nuts in your nut pockets there. That makes it a captured nut. Leave the winch on its uh, resting on the backside. And then just pick up your winch plate and uh, line it up with your holes and get your uh, bolts started by hand. First you want to uh, Free spool, a little line out, get your, get your thimble through your fair lead. We'll show you how this goes. There you have it. Okay guys, so we got our winch married up to the winch plate. And I think that black fair lead definitely was the way to go. We'll see when we get it all together. But what I wanted to show you was the wiring harness. There's a, uh, a reinforcement channel underneath the top of the plate. And it's got three holes in it. And this loom has three push pin clips. You push the, uh, the push pins into the three holes. That holds your harness onto the winch plate and then you zip tie uh, one wire to the other. And there you go. So that, 
that part's done and we're getting close to uh, being ready to set this on. So now it's time to install the, uh, the brush bar onto the winch plate. So we'll put the three studs through the holes, roll the assembly onto the front. That'll give you access to the three studs each on each side of the brush bar. And you're gonna to wanna to just put the nut on the outboard side and tighten it up. The other two go down through the mounting points on the Bronco. The winch and the brush bar, winch plate, all married together. It's time to uh, set this up on the mounting points of the Bronco. And I gotta tell you, um, this is gonna be a two person job. That is heavy and it's awkward. So uh, I'm gonna have to enlist the help of my wife to come out and help me lift this up on and we'll see how that goes. If you know what I mean. Good. All right guys. So, the winch is on, and now it's time to put the last two fasteners on. That'll be on these studs that hold the, the brush bar on. They go down through that mounting bracket. We'll get those on, we'll get those torqued. Well guys, there's the finished product. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So we have our, our Gear America shackles mounted to the new um, recovery points. So the wiring on this, it's not difficult. You just have to really look at the directions probably more than once. But one wire goes right there and, and the other one goes through the center grill opening. They meet back up, then they go up through there to the battery and they even give you the little 10 millimeter nuts. So this, this is the positive for the winch, the one on the end, just like factory. And then over here for the negative, that's this one. So there was a, a lug empty for that and a lug empty for the positive. So that's all wired up. What you have to do is you have to turn your wheel all the way to the left and you have to take some of the pins out of your inner fender liner, bend that back so you can get your hand up in there and help help get your uh, wires up through there. Not too difficult, you just have to read the instructions. Look at them, the pictures are pretty good. A little confusing at first, but study them, you'll figure it out. So it's, the wiring is pretty neat. It's all tucked away for the most part. But that's the, uh, that's the four performance worn winch kit for the Bronco. Now, there is one little thing I want to point out. I had a little situation as we were tightening up these three bolts right there. This one, for some reason, before I reached torque, which was only 80, 81 foot pounds, it, uh, well, we lost the threads on the welded nut, is all I can guess. I don't know why. But I happen to have a couple of the right size um, metric nuts. And that's the yellow zinc nut. We just spun a nut on there and tightened it up. To act as a lock nut. And just for the heck of it, we did the other side too. Just so it's uh, uniform. But that's what's going on there. No real big deal. I don't know why it did that. The other five torqued perfectly. That one, it started to spin. So, so that's what we did. 
Um, uh, that, other than that, no, no problems with the kit. Everything fit real well. You just have to really pay attention to all the different part numbers and, and where they go. Because like I said, there's a left and a right, an inner and outer on some of these. But all in all, uh, utilizing the factory steel bumper, I think this is the way to go. If you want to put a whole new bumper on, that's fine. That's great. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I like this bumper. There's nothing wrong with it. And I like this Ford Performance kit. So there we go. We're going to take it out of the garage. We're going to button up that inner fender liner, uh, put the hood down, take it back to my other shop, and we're going to get that ultra hook on. All right, guys, we've got our Bronco out back here. One thing I do need to tell you is um, once you do this, once you install this, you are supposed to take it to a Ford dealer and have the airbag sensor modified uh, for a winch installation. I guess it changes, um, I don't know, the dynamics of your airbag sensors up front. So they have a setting. Uh, Ford has a setting for a winch, winch installation, which will tune, retune that airbag sensor to uh, take into account that you have a, a winch mounted. And so while we have it out here in the, in the daylight, I guess, kind of the daylight, let you take a look at this again. I think it looks pretty, pretty sharp. There's how much it sticks out. Of course, we're in the shade, but so anyways, what, what we have to do right now is there's our, there's our ultra hook. We have a set of aluminum jaws taped in our vise. We have a few wraps of uh, duct tape around our thimble. We need to remove that snap ring, take the pin out. I don't have a press. If I did, we would be home free, but I don't. And I don't know that this is going to be enough. It marred it up, and I'm just a little disappointed because, you know, Factor 55 is owned by Warren now, but the Warren's thimbles are too wide for the Factor 55 hook. So I'm a little, a little disappointed about that. That's kind of goofy. They need to get together on this. Okay, so that's a fit. It's good. Okay, there's our high-tech ultra hook by Factor 55. So guys, we have a really cool little project for you today. Uh, a few weeks ago, we installed this factory Ford Performance Warren winch kit on the 2021 Bronco Badlands. And it wasn't crazy about the fair lead. It was a polished aluminum. So we put a black Warren fair lead on this for the synthetic rope. Wasn't crazy about the hook that came with the uh, kit. So we, we bought this really cool uh, Factor 55 Ultra Hook. And then I decided to get what they call a rope guard. And it comes in a, a raw aluminum finish. And since everything else is black, the hook's black, everything's black on the winch, the fair lead, I didn't like the aluminum rope guard. So we're going to customize this and we're not going to leave any stone unturned uh, on this rope guard customization. Now, as you can see, it's black now. And this is a Cerakote. This is called uh, Armor. Armor Black, I believe, is the color. Armor Black is what we used on this rope guard. And if you buy one of these rope guards, you're going to get an extra decal which is really cool and that is so you can customize the rope guard and put a new decal on it which we have done 
But we're gonna take this one step further. Here are the fasteners that they send. I, I call them pound rivets. And so, you know, you can't really coat these because they're gonna get beat up and you could touch them up, I guess. But I just, I just think they're a little, I don't know, a little jingy, I will say, um, for, compared to the rest of the hardware or compared to the hook, I should say. And I understand why. Um, you know, you pop these, these rubber pieces are mounted. They, they, it's a friction fit. They've got little rubber nubs on them and they fit real nice in there. So you pop those out to put the rope guard on. And then these rivets, and it's a tight fit. It's a tight fit. They don't just slip in, it has to be tight. And of course you pound on that little nib and it expands it. And you always run the risk of missing with the punch and marring your new coated or powder coated or painted finish. So what we've done, we purchased these eight millimeter diameter by 12 millimeter long uh, diamond black coated aluminum cap screws from ProBolt. Now these are eight by 1.25. 1.25 is the thread pitch. So we've already, before we had this coated, we enlarged the holes in the rope guard. So these would fit nicely. So you wanna do that first. You wanna enlarge your holes and you want to, uh, I actually chamfered them um, with a countersink so you don't have any sharp edges. Uh, Sarah Coder was nice enough to do this real quick for like 20 bucks. And I like the Sarah coating, it's, it's, it's a tough finish, it really is. So the next step is we have to drill four of these holes to get them, get them ready to tap. So you want to use a 17 64th drill bit on these, these four inner holes. The depth is about right. We're probably going to go a little deeper and I'm going to show you why. And also you want to make sure you'll notice how these surfaces are angled. So when you drill, you want to make sure um, your workpiece is perpendicular to your drill bit. And again, the same with the hook. You want to drill perpendicular into your surface with the 17 64th drill bit. So we've got our drill bit. We're gonna take this out to the drill press, uh, get it set up, and then we use this uh, eight millimeter by 1.25 thread pitch bottoming tap. And it's important that, let's see if we can get this to focus. So anyways, you get the idea. The reason this is a bottoming tap, uh, they call it a bottoming tap because the, the threads go almost the whole way, full diameter to the end of the tap. And because these holes are uh, not through holes and because they're not very deep, you have to use a bottoming tap. So. We're gonna get this uh, on the uh, drill press table. We're gonna get our holes enlarged and then we are going to attempt to thread those holes for these nice black eight millimeter cap screws. And if everything works out, this thing's gonna look really good. Of course, they're not in the whole way because we have to drill and tap, but this gives you an idea what this is gonna look like. Way better than what it would have looked like had we 
use the bare aluminum rope guard and these pound rivets. So here we go. So guys, I've gone ahead and drilled uh, one of the holes out with our 1764 drill bit. And if you do this, there's gonna be something that you notice, something that I didn't realize until I drilled into one of these holes. Um, at the top of the hole, there's kind of a lip and that helps hold that rubber piece in. And then it gets a little bit bigger uh, for the ring on the nib of that rubber piece. And then it gets a smaller diameter again, like it was at the top. And you need to drill a little deeper than the hole is originally. Um, I measured this at about 10 and a half millimeters. That's where you want to go. If you just drill to the bottom, you won't have enough uh, depth and enough threads for the uh, 12 millimeter long cap screw. So uh, with the extra depth and the top threads, uh, there's plenty of threads uh, for that screw to hold. And again, this is just a, a rope guard. There's not, shouldn't be any tension on these bolts. Plenty, plenty uh, tight enough to, uh, to hold this on. So this is how you have to set your, first of all, take the rubber off, the, off both sides. All right, take these rubber pieces off both sides and use a level, set, your, set a piece of wood, clamp a piece of wood to your drill press, set your piece on there, and then you use a level on, the, uh, on your work surface to determine the tilt of your uh, bench press table. And this is just an aluminum, so I mean, you don't even have to clamp your piece. You can just hold it with your hand. Uh, it drills real easy. And also, it taps, it taps real easy too. I didn't need to clamp. I held the, the piece with one hand and used my um, eight millimeter by 1.25 tap and just a little handheld um, tapping vise. And they tapped right out. And uh, so the first one came out real good. And we're going to drill. We're going to drill the next three out, and uh, get them tapped, and put it together, and show you what it looks like. These tap pretty easy. No need to uh, clamp this up. Bottoming tap. Just eye it up to get it started. It won't take much to get it started. I mean, it's just want to make sure you're straight with your surface. You back it up. Now, at first, you're just going to go through that lip that I was talking about. And then you're gonna hit a little more resistance into the part you just drilled deeper. And you wanna continuously work it back and forth. You could put a little bit of oil on this if you want to. But this aluminum taps really nicely. the bottom. Simple as that. Oh yeah. That's holding plenty of torque. They don't need to be real tight. This is um, an aluminum fastener and aluminum threads. You can probably put a little blue Loctite on if you're concerned. But there you have it. 
So we take our same tapping tool, put our countersink in there, just lightly run it over just to get any burrs off and to put a nice little chamfer at the top. Details of the count. Nice. It's nice and smooth. So there you have it. There's your customized rope guard ready to go back on the thimble. So guys, there's our completed customized Factor 55 rope guard on the Factor 55 Ultra Hook. I think it looks really good. Thanks for checking out the video. See you next time.